Today's session, uh, last session, just for those of you that are returning or might have heard about it or seen a recording or uh, wherever it might be floating these days, um, we talked kind of like in this series about changing the game, right? And kind of what that means. And so uh, what I wanna do a little bit different um, in this session is I'm just gonna give you kind of like a short, you know, uh, kind of synopsis of who I am, um, what I'm about, and then really I wanna kind of guide this conversation towards things that are going to add, you know, the most, <clears throat> I guess, positive outcomes in, in your worlds, you know, whether it be, you know, life, business, uh, love, education, um, just these kind of different things that are really gonna allow us to have a conversation um, as human beings in the space, all right? So, you know, my name is Coach, well, I, I, you could call me Coach Mike and I'll tell you why. I became Coach Mike about um, four, almost four years ago when I decided to kind of move into becoming a, a full-time educator. Um, prior to that, at, you know, I've always been in youth development uh, throughout my whole existence, but kind of in different formats. And I've, I've had stints in uh, music, technology, um, engineering, um, entrepreneurship for sure. And um, just working on being a happy human being for the past, you know, I don't know, 20 something years, you know, I'm 40 now. And so I think I kind of got some skin in the game. And when they reached out to me to kind of like speak to you and, and just be a facilitator in the space, I think it's primarily just because I can kind of speak to a, a multitude of things. And at the same time, like I'm a very real and authentic person when it comes to my experiences and what I enjoy and how I'm, you know, grappling through my own journey in life. And I think um, that's something that we need space for, especially in this, in this crazy time that we're in. As you know, um, one of the biggest things I'm, I'm grappling with is just my own survivor's guilt, you know, over, over this past year, you know, where, you know, I'm alive, but there's so many friends and family members who are not, not, not by any fault of theirs, but simply by just being a human being on the planet and kind of existing in, in a space where, you know, this pandemic is ravaging you know, the, the human population. And so um, with that being said, I just wanna share, you know, a couple of, you know, slides with you and, and then we can be conversational about how we move through the conversation. Um, if that's cool, you can always hit, you know, your reactions buttons, give a thumbs up, round of applause or any other emoji that's in there. And so, this picture or this part of the slide kind of starts with this thing, change the game. And this is actually a workshop that I facilitated with a large group of youth at Nike headquarters in New York City. And what I always found interesting um, about this picture, sp picture specifically is um, Michael Jordan in the background, but this young man that's actually staring off into space, right? And so um, I remember him specifically, he's a ball player, he's from Harlem. And throughout the time that he was at Nike, it was, um, he was there, but not there, right? So here they are, it's a group of about 200 students being immersed in this process of learning about what it is to actually work at the Nike organization uh, from a few different perspectives, right? Marketing, sales, merchandising, um, kind of like the real deal, design, all of these things. And he was in kind of in the experience, but not of the experience. So he was dealing with something else totally different. And we had a kind of a major conversation on the side. Um, and for me, it just kind of thinks about, it makes me think about, you know, we hold to light these individuals that are in front of us, right? But the true journeys and battles that we go through within our own intersection of life, um, is what really changing the game is about, right? And that's without me giving too much information about, you know, the young man and kind of what he was going through. But um, he changed the game for me that day. He made me look at things very specifically, right? Because I was kind of up on my high horse and I'm like, yo, I'm killing it. Got 250 kids up in here, you know, giving them these opportunities. And he made me think about that from a totally different perspective as far as like equity and what he really needed and what was really important to him. Um, even though, you know, right, you got my man 
you know, Air Jordan and everything that you could ever think about around that kind of um, just do it and, and equality and until we all win, you know, all of that marketing was in his space and in his existence um, and it didn't really hold, you know. Um, so yeah, so as we kind of play with this theme of change the game, I want you to think about what does that mean to you specifically and kind of what, what are you looking at as the game itself? Um, and then what are you looking at as far as like creating these incremental or small changes on a consistent basis? I think a lot of times we look at these very large um, undertakings and we don't think about how we as individuals, as humans on an everyday consistent basis have the opportunity to make a shift in our lives, right? So that's kind of where I wanted to start. I told you a little bit about myself. Um, I'll give you kind of a little bit more context as far as professionally. So I'm 40 years old. Um, I hold a master's degree in kinesi kinesiology and education um, and a bachelor's in advertising communications. Um, I didn't get those degrees until I was 37 years old. Right. And that's only because I wanted to become a teacher. Um, so prior to that, uh, I was already a successful executive, successful uh, um, entrepreneur, uh, worked in tech um, and music and sports and a bunch of other stuff. Um, wrote for Vibe magazine. Um, I live a life of purpose and I also live this life based on these pillars that I exist in. And so the, my, my, I remember at my graduation, my mother told me I still have one more degree to give her, right? I owe her, right? You know how parents do it. Like, you owe me. I, I made you, you owe me. So uh, now I'm moving on to my PhD at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. But um, prior to that, I didn't look at kind of formal education in the same way. Um, I looked at how could I educate myself to then complete certain things that I wanted to complete that were on my bucket list, right? And so um, I, I think that's kind of interesting to share because most people you'll meet, you know, they have their experts and they come at their expertise in a very specific way. I think we live in an expert um, phenomena these days, right? Like I see all these people on YouTube and Instagram and everybody's an expert and everybody's selling you something and everybody knows something, but not too many people will tell you like, yo, I failed at that for like 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and then like give you the specifics um, of those things. And so once again, thinking about how we change in the game, what does that look like? So that's me. So as we go through this journey, we're gonna go through a few different quotes. Um, and I would just like it if we could, you know, unmute, kind of discuss those quotes, discuss what these things might mean and um, pull, you know, hopefully we'll pull some some value out of it for every single person that's in the space. All right, so um, this quote comes from me actually, right? So it's be the change you want to see. You can't complain about the things you do not like about the world. You must become the change you want to see. If you are not a part of that change, then you are a part of the problem. The battle within yourself to become that change is going to be one of the most important journeys of your life. It is not only about figuring out how you want the world to change, but how you will change yourself and in turn change the world. You are the beginning of the change that, change that is to come. And so um, at this point, I just wanna kind of offer up the space um, for someone else to unmute and kind of uh, dissect that for themselves in the context of who you are. And just some norms um, I wanna just create before we open it up entirely. Uh, one, you know, let's all be respectful and loving and caring and protect each other. Um, two, you know, tell us your name, where you're from. Um, don't feel, uh, I guess, the need to uh, mute yourself, meaning like be who you are, right? Don't feel necessary to be like, you know, I'm going to try to kill this super califragilistic word real quick. If that ain't how you talk, talk how you talk, be how you are, exist how you are. Um, and that goes back to that picture in the beginning, right? Because this young man didn't feel like he could be who he was because he was in a building with Nike. 
and we had a conversation about that, right? So I want you to come bring yourself fully into the space and then we can have, have a conversation. So at this point, anyone can unmute um, and just kind of, you know, talk, talk it out. Let's, let's kick it. I mean, um, well, my name is Ryan Martinez. Um, I'm from Maryland. And the way, in the context that I see this is more of like, hey, so my goal is I wanna, you know, do my own startup because I am a computer science major. And so I've, I've kind of been around the startup business, but now I'm working for a bigger, like a mid-sized corporation and like, I enjoy it, but, um, from what I've, from like some of the research that I've done and just kind of like thinking about it, I was like, why do I want to make other people money? I should be wanting to make myself money. So then that's when I started this kind of journey of like, what do I need to do to become that person that can, you know, you know, develop an app and then market it and stuff like that. So that's where I see myself in this context. And I didn't really think about like, how do I want to change the world? It was more like, how can I make money? But in reality, it should just be like, what can I do to to offer a service that could potentially make people's lives better as opposed to, you know, doing a social media app because everyone's on the social media app. And it's very hard right now in the app market because a lot of people, because it's very saturated. So, so it's kind of refreshing to hear something like that, but that's my interpretation of it is how am I going to change myself so that I can change the world? No, oh, Brian. I mean, th definitely. Thank you for offering that up, and um, and really, and really being being real, you know, about your intentions, right? Because it's like, yo, I'm gonna get this bread. Like, I'm gonna build this, and I know what I put in to make this company, you know, millions and billions of dollars. But how am I gonna bring that to myself? And I think, right, like COVID, COVID has switched that a lot. I had a conversation at Microsoft in in a meeting one time, and this is also what kind of led me to, to leave the industry from, from this very specific kind of lens of advertising and marketing. And, and my thought process was like, here you are having this conversation about uh, youth specifically. And what if you treated them as the products, right? But what if we also got really focused and understood that the products that we're building are impacting, you know, young, you know, kids of color, in, and I'll just keep it to America, right? Like in America in a very specific way, but what if we reimagined kind of this, this process, this life cycle process of a product and we looked at that more like the human first, right? We made that more human centric and we begin, begin to look at what we could really build to change that, flip it on top of its head. And, and, and I could throw out all types of terms, right? We're talking about funnels and how we build those funnels and right sales funnels and right, all that wonderful stuff. But really at the core basics of it is how can we impact the people first? How can we put the people first? How can we make the human count first? And I think, you know, the fact that this quote even pulls that out for you is gonna be great. And, and, and something that, you know, you can also speak to Ryan and yourself, right? We know that technology sometimes deletes the human, right? Mm -hmm. um, in, in many respects, it doesn't, we, we think about, you know, the, the code or, you know, whatever, whatever we're building on top of, right? Like if we're, if we're doing something that's more hardware to software integration, we're looking at, okay, the person that's building out or engineering that hardware is literally thinking about the, the, the pieces of the machine. And the person who's building out the code is like, well, how do we get that to integrate with the machine? And then how does this get to work? And many times, right, like in that whole journey, you then have to talk to someone who's like, oh, we're going to go to the, the user experience, or we're going to start doing research, or we're going to pull some data to figure out how this person, but no one really cares how the person is really using the product, right? Um, which I think is why people like Steve Jobs so much, right? Like one of the things that we don't think about many times is Apple what really wasn't a cool product um, in the 80s, right? Like it was really hard to use if you weren't the person that they wanted to use it, right? And so 
I'm happy that this kind of makes you look at the human first. If I might ask, what, what are you thinking about developing? That's, that's the thing. Um, right now it's very saturated. So like back in the early days, like probably like around 07, 06, 08, which is when I was still in high school, uh, you could just put out an app, maybe like a small video game, throw some advertisements on it and make some money. But now, um, what's really hard to do now is that like, if you look at Facebook, you take a startup to have an idea and then you go to Facebook and you're like, Oh, well, Facebook's probably already got that implement implemented. Like a good idea of this would be like, um, I just downloaded the Facebook app again on my phone. Cause I usually use the browser and I just recently moved to Maryland like a year ago. So, um, when I moved here, I didn't have any friends. So I was like dating apps, let's go. And, um, I get on Facebook and they already have a, da a dating app. And I'm like, bro, like this is a problem with like big corporations is they want to do everything. And it kind of like ruins that, that competition for the smaller company. So um, I either have to find something that's very niche and develop an app for that, or completely do something from scratch or do something that complements already existing um companies like patreon how they were like well we're going to make an app or we're going to make a service that basically complements um influencers or anyone that just wants to put out an art or a service or something and still generate income so it's one of those three but i haven't i haven't like really been looking at stuff because i'm also practicing coding to get better because it's there's a lot of things i have to do to like actually get this done but that's where I'm at right now. It's kind of just like more like soul searching. Yeah. And, and, and that's dope. And something you can even pull out of that um, even more powerful is that one thing I know about languages is that they come and go, right. When talking about coding languages, right. right. They come and go. Right. And it'll be, you know, uh, Python hit this, you know, back in the day, the big, the HTML, right. Like they come and go, but the consistency of learning and being on a journey of learning. Right. And like you said, soul searching, um, I always believe that in, in the midst of learning how to code, you're actually looking to find yourself, you know what I mean? So I think, I think it's, there's a lot of um, deep stuff that you could pull out of it, um, but thank you for sharing. Anyone else want to unmute and kind of kind of speak to uh, the quote and just kind of where you are, what you're working on and, and what it makes you think about? You can also hit the chat and we can read the chat as well. Hey, how you doing? My name is uh, Bobby. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, I mean, nothing specific to the uh, to the quote, but just to the, to the young man that just spoke. Um, I, I just want to say, hey, keep, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, innovation is driven out of necessity. Um, and, and you, you know, this is kind of one of the best times to be innovative. You know, there's only a few times in in modern history where uh, an event significantly changes how we as humans, you know, operate, you know, now we're in a COVID environment where you know, everything we've done prior to COVID has completely changed. Uh, so look at it from that, that, that lens and that aspect and just, you know, just develop something that's just based off necessity. All right. Yeah, dope. And Bobby, are you in, are you in tech as well or? No, I'm in the military. So, uh, I'm I've been in the military for 18 years. So uh, that's what I do. I'm in the army. Dope. Dope. And yeah, I have you know two family members that are, uh, you know, career military men now retired. Um, what what do you think? I mean, so a lot of this that I'm talking about is something that exists in your world from very early on in your journey, right? You said 18 years. So maybe you can kind of speak to that and like offer up you know, um, kind of in, like in, in, in my world, in my world, based on, on the quote, um, you know, what, what, what got me was the first part of the quote, you know, be yourself. Um, and then, uh, another part was where you uh, said, um, uh, you know, find a change within, you know, if you, if you, if, if you can't change yourself or if, if you can't find a change within, then you're part of the problem. You know, so in, in my world, as, has been in, my, in the army for 18 years. I'm, I'm a first sergeant now, so I deal with people. You know, when we're not out fighting wars, we're actually dealing with 
individuals, dealing with people. So I, as, as, as a person, I try to, I, I, I try to, what I call, understand the five Fs of each person that I'm in charge of. Uh, so I got, I got 85 people that, that I, I'm in charge of, and I have to account for their, you know, their, their, per, their welfare, their health, their, their, uh, you know, everything about that individual soldier I've got to account for. So it takes me having to know those, you know, each and every one of those soldiers individually. Uh, and, and I've developed a, a, you know, just my thing. It's called the five F's. So I try to know, know them physically, so their fitness, uh, family, friends, finance, and faith. So I try, to try, I try to find out and know one thing about each of those, you know, soldiers. Um, and and it, that helps me, you know, make their, uh, their life better, better for them and, and make better judgments for them based on their different uh, situation. Because not every soldier is the same. Not every soldier is going to have the same scenario, the same problems, uh, the same problem sets. But, you know, so I've got to approach it in, in, a, in a different way every time, regardless of what the, the issue is. So um, I try to know my soldiers and I try to know the people, you know, in, in, the, in the real world, civilians, uh, and treat them with dignity and respect. So, and try, try to just, that's how I try to live my life. No, I mean, that's, that's really dope. And it's, and I, I'm gonna say, uh, one thing that you're doing that I, I really love is that you, that you've broken it down to simplest form, um, to kind of understand how you can best get the, get what's, what's necessary out of another human being so that they can exist in a great space and that you can also exist in a great space with them, especially in a life or death situation. Um, I learned how to do hospital corners um, when I was seven years old. And so um, just to show you what kind of like space and household I was brought up in being around people who are from, you know, who existed in the military. My grandfather was also a career military man. And there's just so many, um, points of value in in what was taught to me handed down and just to hear that you've been doing this for so long and also too that you figured out a formula um but the question i have for you is how how do the men that you work with men and women that you work with how do they respond to it like what about you allows them to respond to it in a positive way so i, I think i think they to it well so for example i'm in the i'm in the 82nd airborne division i'm not i'm not sure if you ever heard of it but we, we we're all paratroopers we jump out of planes all right uh within the within our brigade there's 37 different companies so that means there's 37 different first sergeants 37 different commanders um i feel like that my soldiers uh you know they they i, I feel they they accept that that approach a lot better because I hear a lot of times there's a lot of you know inter unit inter unit movements, so I get a soldier from a different unit that's within the organization, and I, I hear the same thing every time. You know, my last unit was toxic, and you know they didn't care about us. They didn't, you know, just just same, you know, the typical stuff about their last unit. But I'll, but always giving my my me and my chain of command, you know, some some good words and some you know good 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 uh, best practices on how we. Deal with soldiers and how we approach their their situations. Yeah, that's dope. And, and, and what's really cool is, um, like I said, looking at yourself first and kind of like, what do you need to do to then be the person that changes the the trajectory of how they felt prior to coming into your your space? You know, so I appreciate you, Bobby. Thank you so much for for sharing for sure. Um, is there anyone else who wants to? You know, um, before I just move on to the next quote, I'm just kind of discuss this point of, of what we're, for those of you that just joined, we're, what we're doing is we're kind of looking at the quote, we're dissecting it and kind of applying it to who we are and where we are in the current moment in time. So that's projects, love, life, family, um, anything of, of that nature. So, I'm gonna move on real quick. If you wanna talk about this specific thing, throw it up in the chat and I can refer back to it. I'm actually gonna add, uh, Bobby, if it's cool, you can meet and let me know. I'm gonna add the five Fs into the chat because I think it's something that could be very powerful for the community that's currently here. Is that cool with you? 
Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I mean, if you want me, I can type it in, but it's it's fitness it family friends fit. Yeah, I was on it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Appreciate you for that. All right, cool. I'm gonna move on to to the next next piece. Um. So. This is something that I think that we can kind of talk talk about for a while, but um, create power and action by creating a roadmap that moves you towards your goals at an insane rate. Um, and what this kind of really speaks to is, as as we as we jump into this idea of changing the game, and for many of us that means you know many different things in our lives. Like I said, life, love, family, um, religion entrepreneurship, right? The, the thing that I really wanna think, I want us to think about is how are we creating that roadmap, but a roadmap to action, right? Many times when we're thinking about building out things, we, we don't necessarily look at how we're actionably moving from one step to the next to the other. We create kind of these esoteric and metaphysical ideas of what a roadmap looks like. And so what I would love to hear from the group is just kind of like how you're building out these roadmaps. And, I, and I'll be, I'll offer up something really quickly. Um, throughout my life, I've created these things I call uh, pillars, right? So I have two things that I, I exist by. One is called the Mike method, um, which me being Mike, right? Uh, but it's motivation, inspiration, sharing of knowledge and education. And I believe that these four things are extremely important to, to living my life as overtly as possible, right? But within those four things, I created a series of pillars. And these pillars you know, are how I exist every single day, right? How I show up um, throughout every single piece of my life, right? And so uh, one of those pillars is being a father. Um, another one is being a son. Another one is being, you know, a, a good husband, um, you know, being an educator, being a community leader, right? And so I have to make sure that these pillars have such a sound foundation that then I can build everything on top of that. I started this journey around, I want to say 18 years old when I graduated high school. Um, I barely graduated high school. I cut so much school that my parents, you know, still to this day are like, how, the, how in the world did you get out of high school? And so, um, which is even more interesting because I'm building a maker space in my high school now, right? I, I grew up in New York City. I'm from Brooklyn, born and raised. And so I realized during my time in high school that I had no real trajectory. Um, and it's not because I couldn't have one. It's just because I didn't put the time in to understand what a trajectory really meant. Most of us think like, we go to school, we graduate, you know, we either join the military or we uh, formulate some type of career goals. So we go to college and we do these different things. But I had lost a friend of mine when I was 16 years old. I mean, I lost quite a few friends around 16 and 17, but I had lost a friend of mine at 16 years old that really impacted me, right? It was one day he was there, the next day he was gone. And you know, you hear all of the things that I'm sure we're hearing now, especially with COVID, like, like God has a plan. You know, he did what he was supposed to do during his time on earth. And me being closer to him than I think his parents were truly um, and knowing what his aspirations were, I knew those things weren't necessarily true. And he was someone who truly had a roadmap. He wanted to be an NFL player. He was very much on that road, super disciplined, waking up at 5 a.m. Like this, it, it was his life. And, and I also knew that my time on the planet was gonna be extended while his time had been shortened. And so what was I gonna do, right? First thing was get out of high school so you don't die. Because if I didn't get out of high school, my parents would have killed me. That was just number one. I wouldn't be here to this day. It, it would have went down, you know? But then from that point, I had to create kind of like what I told you about these pillars, um, this methodology, and then a true actionable roadmap. So maybe someone can, can unmute and kind of talk about 
you know, their journey and where they are and how they're formulating the idea of what this roadmap looks like. or if you need a roadmap, you know, or if you're searching or hunting for, for those things and those aspects of things. You can hit the chat, you can type, or just, you know, unmute yourself and kind of speak to it um, and offer up anything that you, that you might feel, even in just this moment or something that, you know, comes from history. Uh, so with, with roadmaps, uh, for me, setting uh, achievable goals. Um, uh, since a young age, I've always had you know ambitions of uh, wanting to achieve different things, uh, even even while being in the military. So, you know, I, I always set long term goals. Well, I start off with short term goals, and then long term goals. So short term goals, uh, anywhere from uh, two to five years, and then a the long term goal which is from five to 10 years. Um, so I set those goals and, and I make sure those goals are achievable. Uh, and and, and I, I do whatever is necessary in order to, to, to attain those goals, uh, whether it's purchase a home, uh, working my way to retirement, and then, and then my life after retirement. Um, so in, in, even in, in promotion through the ranks, if, 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 it, if that means, you know, going to multiple schools and getting, you know, you know broadening my education, um, you know, doing whatever it takes to achieve those goals. So, I, again, I set achieve, achievable goals, and, and I have those short-term and long-term goals. And that's kind of how I've, I've always done my thing. Dope. Thank you for offering that, Bobby. And that's, and, that, and, that, and that's powerful, right? We talk about short-term and long-term, which is kind of also really, really where I started. But what I'm going to offer up even in that space is, who do you need to be in each moment that you begin the journey towards that goal. So, so it's a, a really good example, right? Um, for those of you that are academics, so you're in school, um, or for those of you that are starting businesses, right? Every day you wake up, there's, there's a, a, a actionable journey that you're on, right? If, if you're intentional, right? So we we'll start with the intention. We start with how am I intentionally moving? And so say there is a short-term goal of, you know what, I want, I want to, um, I want to run today, right? I want to run a block, two blocks, three blocks. Who do you have to be in that moment? What do you have to change in that moment to get to that execution, to get to that point where you're actually executing on that, right? And a lot of times we get caught up in the, in the goal. A lot of times we get caught up with like, I want to achieve this but we don't think about who do we need to be in that moment to actually do this, to do step one, do step two, do step three. And that might even be, you know, uh, working on being consistent on working with the editing or the auditing of the document that you, you live your life by, right? And that could be anywhere. So um, I live by a document, I have a document, it's in my Gmail, it's an unopened email that literally breaks down maybe the next 20 years of my life, right? And I visit that every single day, right? And we're talking about what I'm doing today to what I'm doing tomorrow to what I'm doing in the next hour. There's a breakdown of kind of like what Bobby talked about with just these short-term and long-term. But my short-terms and long-terms are actually broken down into hours, right? Hours, minutes, hours, seconds, and then, what I work on very consistently in that space is who do I need to be in that period of time, right? Because we think of time very linear, right? But there's a multitude of things that we have to be. And for those of us that are husbands, right? <laughs> Fathers, right? Uh, uh, you take care of family members, right? For, for those of us that are a multitude of things in every single moment of the day, that means you also have to be very specific and intentional about who you're, who you are in those moments, right? You know, you might have a, a, an argument with your significant other, right? Or a disagreement, or, or just a conversation, right? Are you are you intentionally being present? 
right? Who's, who, who are you in that moment where you can be in that space and then achieve that goal, right? So I'll make it even, even simpler, right? Because that's real esoteric. You got to get the laundry done, right? Laundry got to be done. Your mother, father, brother, cousin, uncle, sister, whoever you're with, wife, they say, all right, can you put this laundry in the washing machine for me? Now, for some of us, that might be in the crib. For some of us, that might be three blocks away. For some of us, that might be a, a drive away, a 10 minute drive away, who knows? You have the goal of doing this laundry. The greatest thing about what I'm saying here is you can, do, you can literally be a professional launderer in this, in this moment in time. Like you have the opportunity to actually be someone who does the laundry so well that it'd be like, oh man, this was professionally done. Who do you have to become in the moment, one, to make that choice, then two, to actually execute on it, right? To actually make that happen. And this is something I, I, I really want everyone in the room to kind of think about, hit in the chat. You can unmute yourself and kind of speak to what I'm talking about. But this is, this is how I exist on an every single second basis. If my daughter comes to me and she likes to play zoo, right? We have this little zoo set. I'm, and in that moment, I'm making a decision that nothing else exists and I become a zoologist, right? But I still have to be husband, brother, son, right? I have to be all those things, even though I'm existing in that moment, right? So in my schedule, in my broken down schedule, it literally says, play with, my daughter's name is Malia, play with Molly, right? Every single day, right? I have it broken down on how many minutes I could break it down throughout the course of a day based on what I have to do, right? So intentional, executable, actionable, right? This roadmap we create, it has to begin to look like this if we want to be the very best version and greatest versions of ourselves. So I'm, I'm gonna offer it up to the room now because I'm, I'm talking, but um, Vincent said, put yourself around people you want to become. They say you're likely the average of all your friends combined. You get stronger by having people drive you. If you're not being challenged by your inner circle, reevaluate. Vincent, you wanna kind of unmute and, and, and speak to that? If you can, I don't know if you can. You can just let me know in the chat if you can or can't. All right, cool, Vincent can't talk. Um, which is cool, Vincent, just maybe if you wanna be um, more, you know, break down what you mean. And if anyone wants to mute, unmute and kind of um, speak to just kind of where we're going in the conversation, that's cool too. I'll, I'll go to another world. Um, I mean, for me, I, I think like, so for the most part, like um, I do have goals, but I'm usually like very high roll on them. So like my first goal was to be in a band and that just happened. Like someone, I was practicing vocals and someone was like, hey, you wanna, I had heard someone ask for a vocalist and I just happened to be doing that at the time. So. I kind of high rolled my myself into that one. And then about two years ago, I decided to become an Android developer. And I didn't really have any like, I didn't really plan this. It just was like, I'm just gonna do it. And then however long it takes me, it is however long it takes me. But the thing I think that I need to change now is, you know, actually like, you know, have some sort of schedule, keep myself more accountable. Cause like I can I can keep high rolling into things but it's just probably not the best way to go about things so i'm kind of glad that that these pillars are being established and the reason why i decided to the reason why i kind of like keep pushing things further and further is because um someone had told me you know what's the reason you wake up in the morning and they told me just think of the biggest problem you can and just go with it so that's why i keep pushing because like First it was vocalist, then it was like a career switch. And now it's just like, well, I mean, I might get bored at my job. I might as well just go for like CEO or founder of some company because who knows what's going to happen. So that's kind of like my approach to things. And um, to kind of like piggyback off Vincent. 
So for me, I don't have a lot of friends because of the whole COVID situation. I usually stay home because I'm still, uh, I'm still with my parents and I don't want them to like catch COVID. Um, but for me, I mean, I do believe that it is true that you are the average of your best friends, but, um, also you kind of have to hold yourself accountable for like what you're doing. So after work, I'll usually spend like an hour or two doing something different, whether it's like making a YouTube video or, um, you know, learning something different about Android development. And I'm kind of at the point in my life where I'm kind of, I'm 28, by the way, or turning 28. And I'm kind of seeing that, um, people are starting to have their own lives now. So I'm not like consistently hanging out with my friends like I did back in the day. So I guess what I'm saying is like, as you grow older, um, you just kind of have to hold yourself more accountable to the things you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, and the, and the thing about it too, thank you, Ryan, uh, for sharing for sure. The thing about it is that those pillars and the methodology allows you to make decisions on what that roadmap looks like, right? So what I'm hearing from you is that creativity, music, that that part is something that you innately need to exist, right? And what I'm what I'm kind of talking about at the existential level is those those pillars never have to leave you. Right. And we spend a lot of time in our lives where we never think about who we really are and how we really exist. Right. And what we exist for. We think about what can I get? What can I do? What can I have? But not who I am. Right. And there's a, a, a philosopher uh, that you can look up. His name is Jung, J U N G. Just, you know, Google him. Um, re read some of um, read some of the work that he's put out into the space, but it kind of talks of you know there was a quote or something that he said that I thought was interesting. He was like, you know, as humans, we walk around on the planet and we don't think about the thing that makes us human beings: a respiratory system, a brain, blood, right? Like we think about everything else, but we don't think about what makes us air. We, we don't think about that. We've compiled so much on ourselves that we don't understand that our existence or our role in life is to exist. And that society existing within society, it causes us to think a very specific kind of way. And I think, right, if, if you wanna be in a bit, I'm into music, I've been DJing, I DJ around the world, I like, I love it it's one of my pillars. That creativity is one of my pillars, right? Like it's something that I can't exist without. It's something that I need to be and I need to do. And as you build out the pillars and the methodology, it will lead you to understanding how to build out kind of a, a goal set, right? Short-term, long-term, like Bobby talked about, right? Like it'll lead you into that space and then allow you to understand who you are within each moment that you're building out that those goal sets and that you're trying to build out these actionable, executable items, right? You might've heard the term, you know, smart, smart goals, right? Right, so it's like specific, measurable, blah, 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 right? It's, it's, a, it's an acronym, you could just Google it. But like, as you, you're creating that roadmap in all aspects of life, right? I'm not just talking about, you know, getting money, or, or, or where you wanna be at in your career, but I'm really talking about who are you? What makes you uh, able to embark on a journey to happiness? What traumas do you have to overcome? What challenges do you have to overcome? Who do you have to be? How do you have to show up every single day on, on a consistent basis, right? Julia said identity and purpose, right? So there's an academic paper I wrote on identity formation just some a tidbit of information around that right your identity is a is a legal right right within the within the country of of the united states of america right within within the us right and, and in many parts of the world but recognized by the un your identity is a legal right and that identity is broken down in a multitude of ways but just understand that your existence is important right and then, you know, Julius, you mentioned purpose, right? Those pillars are literally the reason that you exist. It's the purpose, it's the purpose for your living. And some, some of us, right, some of us in the world, we exist for the purpose of accruing things, 
And what we ultimately find out at the end of the road, and this is what COVID has done as far as equalizing, is that maybe it makes you realize like, hmm, my purpose might not have been the journey I was supposed to be on as a human being, as someone who has a brain and blood and kidneys and a liver, right? Like, how, what am I? What am I here to do? And I think this this uh, this roadmap we're building is one of real human existence. That's that's what I'm talking about, right? So methodology, pillars, right? Smart goals, right? Which Bobby mentioned, short term and long term. Right, it's going to help you kind of figure out how you move, um, and that's the Vincent said that's the self reflection that will help you grow as a man, a hundred and a million percent, right? Because the the journey of the of the human on this planet is is something very serious, right? Because how many of us really know uh, what our roles are really supposed to be on this planet, right? We create them, but you know, if you believe in a higher power, then maybe you're trying to communicate with the higher power. Um, if you don't, then you're trying to communicate, maybe you're trying to communicate with nature or you're trying, you're trying to create all these things. But at the end of the day, you still have to wake up and get through life. You still have to wake up and get through what am I doing every day? And I, I'll just say this too, and um, being totally and 100% uh, grateful for the women that are in the room, but as a black man in on this planet, right? On this planet, it is sometimes a very, an ex extremely hard thing to understand how I am supposed to grow and blossom without being uh, crucified on a consistent basis or hurt or maimed or made to feel trauma, right? And, and that's in a multitude of ways. And I've been, I've been to many different places on this planet. And Jamie said, people's nature is to adapt to its environment. Yes, you can definitely adapt to your environment. But one of the things I'm gonna challenge that with is I think you can supersede your environment. You can supersede the space that you are by understanding and having a, a valid truth that you follow on a consistent basis. When I was growing up, you know, I grew up in New York City. I'm from Marcy Projects in Brooklyn. Um, I grew up all around Brooklyn. You know, a lot of my friends smoked weed growing up. And, and very early on, I was just like, nah, that's, that's not me, right? It's not, it's not me, it's not something I do, you know? And a lot of it came from, you know, I had asthma, right? So I always thought like, you know, just keeping it real, like I always thought like the smoke would give me an asthma attack. I'm gonna have to go to the hospital and my pop's gonna punch me in my face for smoke for smoking weed, right? You're gonna be like, yo, what was you doing? Oh, you know you got asthma, you're gonna kill yourself, right? And then the other aspect of it is, you know, I mentioned I'm 40 years old, growing up in Marcy in the 80s, um, I was very impacted by the crack epidemic, right? So I was able to really see um, what addiction did to uh, family members and, and my friends' family members and you know, I remember one specific instance where a friend of mine, you know, uh, and it, it also it also kind of bugs me out because he never missed school. His moms would always come to the, come up to the school, but his moms was on substance. You know, she she was she was addicted to crack, right? And I just remember one day it was raining. I was coming outside to get some milk from the store across the street, and my homie who was in the next building, he's coming outside, and his mom's is outside. You know, shirt ripped, you know, ripped up. And she just dancing in the rain, and that that image stuck in my in my mind so vividly, right? That it allowed me, you know, that trauma. It allowed me to build a specific pillar where I was like, I'm never gonna put nothing to my lips, no weed, no nothing. It's never it's never gonna happen. So these are the things, you know, where I think you can supersede your environment. You can become greater than the environment that you were given, um, you know, without believing that you are the greatest thing within the natural environment, right? Um, Julia said, agreed to both perspectives. Uh, Kyrie said, you adapt to the part of your environment that you want to mimic. And this is also why I, th I think this is a really good point, Jamie. 
I think this is also why Shanice wanted to build this space, right? Because I think it's very recognizable that we need each other in these moments. And that by, you know, uh, kind of sharing with each other and that sharing of knowledge, we have the opportunity to then supersede, you know, supersede, you know, adapt in the space that we're in and then take that back with us and supersede. But um, does anyone else want to share a muted? Um, because I see a lot of stuff in the chat, but I just want to give the opportunity for anyone who wants to speak. Before I move on to the next quote. Uh, it, it definitely takes a visit, that's a fact. All right, so I know, you know, just in respect of your time, um, this is gonna be the last quote we kind of like jump into conversationally. And I think we might have to make these sessions a little bit longer um, because like, I feel like there's so much that we could jump into and really talk about. And we haven't even gotten to like true specifics, you know, where we're, we're all just kind of, you know, venting and, and, and learning this process, right? So um, even in the darkness of situations, there is light. In that light, you will find your advantage. In that advantage, you will find your opportunity for greatness. And so, I'm just gonna tell you what I mean um, fully before you interpret. And so the darkest of situations, um, life or death, um, things you might perceive as the, you being at the end of your road or you actually being at the end of your road, um, your mental stamina is not there, uh, passing of, of family and friends and all of these things that we're dealing with in the, in the current moment of time and a multitude of everything. Just think about your darkest, darkest space, right? There is always light. There is always something. If we think about this idea of changing the game, the one thing that exists in that darkness is us, right? Us, we are that light, right? We are that opportunity to actually be able to shift, right? And we can interpret greatness in a bunch of different ways, right? So in the movie Rocky, right? Like the, the greatness means something in the movie Rocky, right? That it might mean differently somewhere else. But in all of those situations, we exist as that character. We exist as the character that no matter how many times you get beat down, you can get up, right? And in many instances, we have um, people around us that can also provide the opportunity for us to get up, right? And, and there's been many times in my life where I felt like I was in that dark space and that I, I, I couldn't see beyond the darkness. And a friend of mine, I'll never forget what he told me, man, and one of my best friends in the world. And he said, Mike, you've always been someone who I've looked to. And he's, he's quite a few years older than me. And he was just like, you've always someone who I've looked to, to, to understand and believe that anyone can do anything if given any type of opportunity, right? And to make it simpler, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you told me, right? That's my interpretation. But he said, yo, you my nigga, right? Pardon the words, I'm just gonna, I'm bringing my full self here. He said, yo, you my nigga. But you are a dude who looks at penny problems like million dollar problems, right? He said, you gotta start understanding that there are no million dollar problems. There are only penny problems, right? Everything, this is, and this is a dude I watch go through a lot in life, you know what I'm saying? kid in high school, like all, all everything that you, everything that you ever thought of, this person I've been through. And he was basically telling me, I can't see beyond myself. I can't see beyond uh, the darkness in front of me, right? But I'm not looking within, right? I'm not, a, I'm not looking within myself to see the light. And um, in that moment, I was going to make a very bad decision. And he helped me to, to understand it that that wasn't the decision I needed to make. And that the advantage and the opportunity was in the pain that I was going through. The advantage and the opportunity was in the challenge that was in front of me. And that if I was gonna change the game, 
really what he meant was change yourself, change who you are in every single moment that you show up on this road, on this journey that you're traveling. And that really, um, that flipped my whole perspective. It flipped everything I ever thought about, you know, and, and it really allowed me to see like, oh, okay, no matter what, I can win. I just watched this documentary on, I never watched this before. There's a basketball player by the name of Lenny Cook. I played ball with coming up in Brooklyn. And he was supposed to be like that guy, you know what I'm saying? And he had a terrible fall. And I remember just being in so many instances where, where Lenny would get this advice, but because of, of his own darkness that surrounded him, he couldn't see that he was the light. Not because he was supposed to be the greatest basketball player ever. Like he, he was supposed to be LeBron James, but it's simply beyond the trauma that he had experienced he couldn't see that, he couldn't see beyond that. And he couldn't see that he was the answer until he failed and then he became the answer. And to me, that's the power, right? It's not the power, the power is not being imperfect. If you look in the quote, it has nothing to do with being perfect. It just has everything to do with understanding that you are the answer, you are the light in that darkness. And that even when the darkness engulfs you, you have the you have the ability to be that light, and I know some of you are probably religious, and and you can, uh, I guess, um, connect that light to a higher being. And for those of you that are not religious or don't believe in in a higher being, then you you also know that there's nature. Nature, it's, you know, the bioluminescence or, or the the light at the five hundred levels below below sea level. You see the creatures that have the brightest lights, right? So it's kind of all these things, but I'm gonna leave it to y'all um, to, to open up and you can unmute and I'm gonna read some stuff in the chat. Um, so choose sometimes we can't see past ourselves and our current circumstances. Um, agree as well as your personal decision and act and how you adapt. Vincent says, it says a lot about you that you were open to hearing that advice. Sometimes the best advice is ignored because we're not open to accepting it. Uh, Kyrie said, I agree. I learned the most through trauma. Yeah, and that's that's these dark moments, you know. Um, and you know, Bobby, I'm actually gonna throw this to you and I'm, cause I, I really like how you've shared and what, you, what you've given up so far, but you're, you've been in the military a long time. So I'm guessing you've also seen active service. Yeah, I've been active all, all 18 years, active. So uh, came in. Came in during the invasion and I've been in ever since. So I think, even, you know, just to put it in, in, in more of like a physical context, you've been in those, I'm sure those dark moments that are actually yeah. like physically dark. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been deployed four times, got four combat deployments. Uh, but with that quote, when you read that quote, the one word that, 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 that came to the forefront of my mind was uh, resilient, resiliency. You know, a lot of people don't understand that the human mind and human body can withstand a lot more than what uh, you think it can. Um, and, and, and a lot of people don't understand that at, at, at every aspect, uh, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, at every aspect of our life, we, we fail at some point. Uh, and, and some people just don't understand that uh, as long as you keep pushing through, uh, you, you're supposed to fail. All right? No one's going to get it on the first go. Uh, you're going to hit points where you fail. And it's all about how you how resilient you are uh, to continue moving forward, uh, continue, you know, you know, driving towards that, that, that goal of yours, whatever it is. Uh, but you, you've got to be resilient. You know, people, people, you know, they have a couple of failure, failures and they, they just call it quits. Uh, but the human mind and the human body, trust me, can withstand a lot more than you think it can. Yeah. A million percent, man. And, and definitely thank you for sharing that. Cause I, I have, I have this, um, like fuck perfect, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's something I've really I've really looked at. Like I wrote that, I don't know, I want to say maybe about I think around the time I was working on this master's degree, right? My my undergrad is in advertising communications. I decide I'm gonna go get a master's in kinesiology. I hate biology. I hate everything about learning about anatomy and the body. And 
you know, once again, you get that homie advice, which is important and powerful. My homie, same homie was like, yo, fuck perfect. All you got to do is get to the finish line. And, I, and I, I'm going to share something with y'all that I, I haven't shared with anyone, right? My graduation from my master's degree was the last graduation, right? It was like 2019. COVID happened and there hasn't been another graduation in, in, in school since then. And I, I graduated at Barclays Center, right? Now, when I graduated high school, I had a 72 average. I went to college for a couple of years, played some ball, left college because I thought I was going to be Diddy. Um, and that, that caused a lot of contention in my family. You know, I come from a big project family. And if anybody knows anything about project families, then you know that there's one or two that they look to, right? My nickname is two, just so you, you know what I'm saying? So you, you know what it means to my family. So I graduate Barclay Center, I, you know, summa cum laude, I do my thing, confetti coming down, you know, and I'm from Marcy Projects. So understand what the Barclay Center meant to my community, right? We, we saw Hove take his hat off and get his jersey up in the, right, up in the rafters. And, and I said, if I ever do a degree, if I ever do anything, I am going to graduate like that. I'm going to be the new Barclays, right? But in the midst of that, I had to pass all these goddamn classes that were crazy on top of being a father, having another baby, working, changing careers, like doing all these things, right? Trying to make other moves. And once again, I'm, I'm faced with myself. Now, one of my biggest fears always was school, not because I wasn't good at it, but because I hated to go to class, right? And I think going deeper is I doubted myself, wondering if I was good enough, if I deserved to be in the academic space. And this happens a lot. You know, there's, there's a paper, my, my thesis for my PhD is about what happens to young black men at the elementary level and how teachers, how the fact that you don't get to have teachers that look like you and even the ones that might look like you might actually cause this fear of academia that's so deep that you never know when it surfaces. It causes this trauma, right? And so we get guided towards, you know, sports. So we get guided towards civil service. So we get guided towards these things, but do we know if that's who we're really meant to be? And so me attacking this degree and something that I never, you know, was really into, was I never really into it or did somebody put that in my head? But mind you, I never studied the classes. So I was in those moments where I had to say like, yo, who are you gonna show, you know, my son coming with me to school. Who are you gonna show up to be for this young man that you're raising? Who are you going to be? Who is the best version of you? And then to get to the Barclays and graduate like that and have my son and my mother and my wife and my daughter and like my family see that. And I didn't rap. I didn't play for no basketball team. I didn't, right? I, and I did that. And that to me was so powerful, but it was really me facing myself, you know, and like really realizing like, oh man, you know, some of these constructs or things that exist, we we have to knock them down. Like Bobby said, we have to be resilient and we have to channel that resiliency in every single aspect of our existence. And we can't just fall on the laurels of one thing or the other. Just because you were a good earner and you were a bad husband, does that make you great? Just because you were a good husband and you were a bad earner, does that make you great? Just because you were a good husband, you were a bad father, does that make you great, right? Did you clean the dishes at, to the best of your ability, even if you failed at it, even if you're not good at it, even if that first time you try to fix that car or that first time you, you go to that interview and they tell you, nah, or that first business you try to build. You know, I've been building businesses since I was nine years old. I used to pack bags in the supermarket. I was probably HelloFresh, you know, before HelloFresh existed. I was delivering groceries packing bags in the supermarket, delivering groceries. I was doing like 200, 400 a weekend. I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I was making money. And, and my parents 
wouldn't have to worry about certain things, right? That's just resilience, right? We're resilient people. We find a way to create and do things that we never thought of. You know, the human race, right? Because there's only one race. That is the human race, right? There's no aliens that's going to come down and be like, oh, well, you're a lighter shade of brown and you are, you know, a shade of pink. Um, I think they're just going to, you know, if they want to kill us all, they're just going to be like, human, human, kill you all. That's it. That's what we're doing, right? So <laughs> there's a resiliency, but there's a crazy resiliency for those of us that are melanated. And what we've had to endure, you know, throughout the world, you know, at, just as a melanated people, you know, and so in the darkness, right, there is light, that light is you, that's your advantage, use that advantage, it is your opportunity. And in that opportunity, you'll find greatness, whether you win, or you fail, whether you win, or you fail, the greatness is still found and you can exist in that space so consistently, right? Pillars, methodology, all right? That's key. I really want everyone to try to think about those things, right? You understand the SMART goal, right? Long-term, short-term, right? You know, specific, measurable, right? Look it up, Google. Right? And all of this is cyclical, all of this is interchangeable, right? But just even within that, as you're going towards um, your goals, understand that no matter how dark things get, you are the light, you are the resilience, you are the thing that will keep you moving forward. Um, and then listen to your friends, listen to your peoples, right? Your real friends. You know, my homies, that's been my homie since I was 13 years old, and he's four years older than me, right? He'd tell me like it is, it never, it never fails. Not, I don't keep anyone around me who, who does not do that. Um, I don't like it all the time, right? But I know it's important and it's valuable. Um, and so I'm gonna pause it there because I'm sure we're gonna do another session. Um, I wanna offer it up to the room for any you know, last points of conversation or if any needs or questions that people need specifically. So. Um, once again, just give you a little bit about my expertise, you know, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, business, education. Um, I don't know, we can get into married life. I think I'm a, you know, if they had a, a diamond husband, I probably would be a diamond husband. I work on that every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like the jump shot. Like, I don't play. I'm out there shooting a hundred. So um, if there's anything, questions or anything you need, now's the time. And then after that, we'll, we'll wrap it up. So you can unmute or hit the chat. Or if there's just anything that you want to say. Thank you again. Can a host drop their social accounts in the chat so we can follow you? For sure. Um, my IG is private, but just hit me up. I'll, I'll accept you. Oh, it's all good, Ryan. No worries. Um, I'm sure you know this is surfacing in. I'm sure we'll chop up some of the some of the pieces and and doll them out so this way you can check it on some of the socials and just kind of see what we talked about. But I feel like you know this is more like a family conversation, so I think we might have to be very specific on what we share. Um, but you know, I appreciate you for for coming anyway, for showing up, for sure. Ooh, Roberto, thank you for sharing that. I mean, uh, I guess I can just share a little bit about myself. Um, in college, I was basically a C student. And um, my first gig wasn't the best job. I still consider it like the biggest waste of time. But now, now that I've gone through most of that stuff, um, most of my friends look at me 
for some kind of expertise because I was the one that put myself out there and did a complete job switch. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to relate this to like, even though it might get dark, um, if you actually put your mind to it and work through all the foothills and stuff like that, you can do what you want to do. Um, an example of this recently would be uh, since I'm kind of living with my parents still and it's COVID, I don't have many friends out here, but um, that's my kind of the dark element, but the light element to it is that I learned to be more comfortable with myself. And I feel that, um, you know, I have, I've been, I've finally found some comfort in being alone and being able to, you know, make more time for the things that I want to do. So I guess there's that light aspect. No, that's dope. I mean, it being alone, and this is, this is like an offline conversation, but um, it's, it's definitely something that is, is something you have to work on, right? Because as, as humans, we, we immediately want to connect to others. Um, but sometimes connecting to others is um, either, you know, putting ourselves in the, the way of trauma or putting ourselves in situations that are not conducive to those pillars that we built. Um, and that happens a lot, you know, and I think, you know, before everybody joined, we were talking about like these, these love movies that come out, right? And like how they, how they reinstitute, you know, traumatic experiences and traumatic things, right? And like, we think like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I need to get me a girl like that or a guy like that, or, right? And like, this is how I need to move. And this is what this feels like. And, it, and it's, but nah, that definitely is, might not be it. You know, that time alone and that time to figure out what you need and what's necessary for you is, is going to be um, extremely important. But I will also say this, Ryan, you know, do the work too. Like think about those pillars, like really be true to yourself and don't compromise. You know, like I love the fact that you're like, yo, I want to be in a band and these things are powerful, man. Like, and it might be something that you need for your soul and your spirit. You know, um, I was laughing with my wife the other day, but she's, I haven't, I love heavy metal like for real, always did. So I was like 13, 14 years old. And um, I haven't listened to heavy metal in a long time, but I found myself like going through some old stuff, like listening to some tool and perfect circle. And I was like, oh man, I miss, I miss this. You know, that make you want to punch somebody in the face music. right? And, that's um, the music I played. Oh, that's so dope. Um, so we, we definitely got to connect. But it made me realize like I was craving it. I missed it. And I missed the piece of me. And um, that can be sometimes the loneliest moments, right? Because you're like, I'm not with myself. So you're unmuted, so. Yeah, I want to say something for, for Ryan. Um, you know, so as humans, we're, 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 we're hunter-gatherers. And the gatherer part is really important because um, not, not, not everyone is, is able to be alone. You know, some people can't handle it and it's, others can't. Um, so I would say reach out to, you know, reach out to, reach out to people and just try to find mentors and, and, and whoever, whoever you think uh, will, will help you get to your, your ultimate goal um, rather than uh, trying, to, trying to do it alone. Just, just reach out to as many people as you can, find mentors, because uh, definitely do, doing it by yourself and, and staying isolated, it, it may not be the best way for, for you. Um, for me, it's different. I, I like being alone. I don't have any friends. I don't have anybody I talk to. I go to work, come home, and that's it. I'm like, fuck everybody else. Um, but <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, other than my family, my my wife and my kids, uh, those they're my friends. So, uh, but again, um, not we're, we're hunt together. We're, we're not. It's not. It's not natural. And, and like, again, COVID has put, put us in this environment uh, where we got to do unnatural things. So it's not natural for us to be alone. So. I say reach out, find some mentors, find people you can you can interact with, um, and you be all right, man. Yeah, I, I have some friends, but it's more just like it's more like I just miss, I miss just miss being in front of people and just you know shooting the shit. That that's mainly it. Like I'm I'm for the most part I could do like five days without seeing anyone, and then maybe like four hours at two day every two days talking to people, and I'll be good because I like being by myself. It's just that. Just that social aspect I miss. Yeah, and I mean, and it's but it's good that you can recognize that too. You know, what I'm saying and that you you build that as a pillar, which means when, and when I say that, like 
let me also not be esoteric. Like I'm definitely talking about execution. So that pillar, like it, there's no pillars that's built out of dreams that are gonna support a building, right? Like if you're gonna support that building, you gotta get that concrete, you gotta mix that concrete, you gotta actually build it up. So understand, like, like you said, that five to five day to two day ratio, right? Also too, Bobby offered up something that's powerful, right? Like that hunter gatherer mentality that need to connect is innate in all of us, right? Um, but it's, it's clear on, be clear on who you're going to connect with and how they're gonna offer that mentorship. And that, and that helps a lot with understanding who you are too, right? So for instance, if you wanna learn how to, you know, you know tool, you know schism, Well, this is a song called Schism by this band called Tool. Google it. Um, there's a guitar riff and a bass riff. That's ridiculous, right? You can't, you know, you could spend hours and hours and hours on that shit, or you could spend hours and hours and hours with someone else who knows how to play it. There's gonna be a different experience in both of those things, right? And so, um, yeah, just, just be cognizant of that. And uh, you know, you have my information now too. Just feel free to hit me up, you know, and be like, yo, what up? I think Bobby dropped his info in the chat. Um, <laughs> saying like, you know. You know, and Bobby, I was gonna say, I second you on that too, man. I'll be for sure. I, I think being a father too and being a husband it's it's a it's an interesting journey that you're on for a lifetime. So you gotta be present for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I can recommend a book to everyone in the group, um, it's uh, one of my favorite books. It's called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, I think Ryan, I, I think you you like that, especially trying to trying to develop your 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 app, develop or whatever you're trying to develop. Um, I think that'd, that'd be a good good book for you. Yeah, Tipping Point is definitely a really really good book. It's it's entertaining too, um, but there's some strong and really powerful, valid uh, principles in there. Um, and it kind of also it talks about kind of like what the shift between um, or or the shift in going into the zeitgeist, like what happens when you shift into that zeitgeist. So. There's, there's a lot in there that you can pull out of it, but it also gives some really great stories that you can connect to and kind of understand yourself within too and place yourself within, um, for sure. I, I would also give you The Power of Now, which is, um, I'll put that in the chat too, uh, which, which is also a really good book that will kind of allow you to exist in, this, in the center um, of the now, right? Like understanding what it is to be present and intentional every single day, um, because we don't know if tomorrow is is going to be here, you know. And um, and at the same time, preparing for the future. So, yeah. And if there's any uh, Eckhart Tolle, right, it's a good read. Thanks for sharing that up, Julius. Too. Uh, yeah. And if there, if there's any other books that y'all want to share, um, please throw it in there. Please hit me up on, on um, IG too. Like everyone on my IG, I know personally, like just being real, like I don't really, you know, I connect with people, but I'm connecting with you. So if you're gonna hit me up, hit me up so we connected. Like not so you can lurk on my shit and be like, yo, what, what's coach doing today? You know what I'm saying? Like I go, I'm not gonna post my breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't gonna happen. But if you wanna connect on some real stuff, um, please hit me up. You know, I post a lot of work that I do uh, with my students um, and just kind of stuff that I'm, I'm journeying on through life as, as far as work. Um, and there's a little bit of my family mixed in there too. I kind of try to keep them, you know, keep them uh, anonymous. Shanice just put hers in the chat, which is just pumpkin. You'll see a lot of her sneakers more than you'll see her. Um, Cause she got an ill collection. I know y'all see them boxes back there. Hey, I promise I got you beat. <laughs> listen, I, listen, we we could do that one day for sure. We could just pull out pairs. We could just pull out. We could just pull out pairs. 
I'm sure you do, Bobby. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> oh, man. But um, we could do this all night. For me, I'm in Berlin, so it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and, and, and go grocery shopping and do the laundry and clean the house. Um, which are my duties. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to say I appreciate y'all. Thank you for, for sharing, whether it's in the chat or, you know, unmuting yourselves. Um, thank you to these two powerful women for creating this space and allowing this space to exist and uh, allowing us to kind of show up in this space and, and, and speak uh, and be a part of it. I look for like, I could do this every month, y'all. Like, I really... This is also feeding my soul, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't know that I would I would enjoy and 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 need this as much as, as I did, but much like uh, Metallica, I kind of miss this stuff, man, you know? So um, thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful to you guys. Thank you. Sorry I jumped on late, but yeah, I'll try to catch another session, just trying to cook dinner and yeah, you know. Oh, listen, listen, you see, you, do, you doing that thing. That's that baby bajor right there. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, I know what it is. I know what it is. How many you got over there? I see you got one. Is I got one, one four month old, and then a ten year old, and a six year old. He's the first. Really? One. You deep. You deep in the game. Deep hey. in the game. I needed a boy. I had to get that boy out there. I, I hear you. I, I I got lucky. I got one boy, one girl. Oh man, you done for. Yeah. This one, my wish. grandma, my grandma gave me that. Don't have no more. You know, right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> so, but yeah, I appreciate you. Much, much power to you for sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shanice, I'm gonna throw it over to you. Let you send us off. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys for showing up. We'll definitely do this again. Um, I'm trying to have this at least once a month, so look for it. Next month, I hope you come, share this with your friends. I just feel like it's a, a opportunity for everybody to kind of vent, get to know one another, and learn things from someone else that you could be experiencing or you may experience later on and kind of build a bridge for friendship. So thank you guys for coming. Um, like Sam said earlier today, this is recorded. So our media team will edit this and it'll go up on our website. So on our I'm in my year website, you'll see events. You'll see this video maybe like within a week or two, it'll be uploaded. And also all of our past events will be uploaded as well. So um, yeah, thank y'all for jumping on. I can't wait to see y'all next time and your friends too. And hopefully you get in a good place where you can put your camera on and you can share and all that good stuff. So. I can't wait to see y'all. Uh, thank you, Mike, for doing this. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. Bye, guys.